Good morning and welcome to Market Day Report. I'm Chris Swift. We have seen the uh, market trade a little bit sideways most of this week, all in anticipation of today's WASDE report. So let's see how we closed last night's session and getting ready for this morning's opening bell and the corn market pretty much unchanged. I've got the December contract up a quarter, 488 and a quarter, 87 the low and 89 and three quarters the high. The March contract unchanged on the day at 503 and three quarters. May down a quarter, 511 and a half, and July unchanged on the day. Our soybean market had been a little firm when I left the house this morning and still is. November up six and a half, 1259 even. Jan beans up five and three quarters at 1278 even. And July beans up four and three quarters at 1309 and a half. And in our wheat market, I saw that it had traded just a little bit firmer and a little bit softer now, but not by much. December down a half at 555 and a half. March down a quarter at 587 even. And New Crop July down three quarters at 624 and a half. Kansas City hard red winter wheat down one and a half on the December, 665 and three quarters, with all the rest of the months down one to one and a quarter. And wrapping up the Minneapolis spring wheat. Uh, mixed this morning with the front end December up one and a quarter at 719 and a half. March up one and a quarter at 743 and a half. I'd like to invite my guest Brian Hoops in this morning. Brian is with Midwest Marketing. And I know that we've seen pretty stagnant markets and everybody's waiting to see what the WASDE report's going to come out. Is there anything special you're looking for this morning? Well, you know, good morning, Chris. Um, yeah, you know, we're always looking to trade the news and there should be some news at 11 o'clock, or at least we hope so, because, you know, corn's been very stagnant uh, recently. We've kind of traded in about a 25, uh, 30 cent trading range since mid-August. So traders are looking for something to try and give us direction, uh, at least some direction, whether it's up or down. Of course, you know, producers should be looking for higher prices or hopefully we're going to see them at some point. We saw uh, export sale this morning to Guatemala. So a country other than Mexico's buying U.S. corn, which is encouraging. Uh, but really, it's going to get down to what the USDA says at 11. And, and I think we're going to be closely watching what they say as far as yield goes, because that is going to give us uh, a, a change in ending stocks, whether the yield is lower or much lower than what the trade is expecting, or in fact, if it increases, like uh, some in the trade are, are also expecting, um, that is going to change our ending stocks considerably. And uh, you know that's going to be cut the type of news event that I think this uh, the market is desperately searching for to try and give us some longer term direction. Sure. And I, and I know this is going to be a loaded question to you, but do you think that there is a benchmark number that might turn the tide one way or the other? Yeah, you know, I think we're at 177 and change on the bean, on the corn yield and uh, 52 and change on the bean yield. So is there a number there that might tip the scales one way or the other? Well, if, if we get those numbers that you're talking about, 177 and 52, we're going to be really lower today. That would be some bearish numbers. The trade's looking for 173.6 or so in, in corn yields and around 49.9 in, in soybeans. Both of those are just a couple tenths of a bushel smaller than last month. So you, you go something much smaller than that. You get into the, the low 49s for soybeans, um, maybe 171 for corn. Then you're talking, uh, you know, potentially a, a positive number number, but uh, you start coming in anything larger than I think a month ago, and the, the, the focus is going to shift towards, wow, this crop is, is not as bad as we thought, and getting larger, now where's our demand, and, and how does that affect our ending stocks? So, um, yeah, we've, you know, we've heard some uh, some people that uh, want to talk uh, about maybe 51 or 52 bushel yields for, for soybeans and 175 or, or more for corn, and we'll see if the USDA agrees with that. Sure. So we know the wheat market is going to be a part of this as well, and we've had a a little bit of a trouble with the drought and some spotty wheat plantings. Do you see any surprises in the wheat market? Okay, so market here, you know, has especially Kansas City wheat fallen to contract lows. There's been some good participation across the winter wheat plains areas. That crops off to a really good start and looks really good. So that's keeping the pressure against wheat. There was talks with uh, yesterday that between Egypt and Russia on a private tender, trying Russia, Russia's trying to get some uh, sales made, and those talks didn't go very well for them. Egypt decided to call off the talks and issued a optional origin tender uh, yesterday afternoon, and and so the result. 
results are starting to trickle in for that uh, tender. It doesn't look like Russia is going to be exporting that wheat, um, but it doesn't look like the U.S. is going to participate in it either. The uh, the wheat production numbers were given to us at the end of September in that small grain summary report. So as far as today's report goes, not going to have much in the way of wheat information. It's mostly just going to be uh, ending stocks and adjustments for, for demand. We know that those stocks are going to be larger because of a bearish production figure at the end of September, but a lot of that's probably already dialed into the market. Yeah, and it has been in a pretty bare market. We've watched it just about every day kind of shrink just a little bit lower. So, Brian, stay with me. we got to take a little commercial break real quick. We're talking with Brian Hoots with Midwest Marketing. Stay with us. Welcome back to Market Day Report. I'm Chris Swift. We're looking forward to the opening bell now in the live cattle market. And we had a really big spurt higher towards the close yesterday. And I'm anxious to hear it, get our next guest back on and see a little bit about it. But we closed the October fat cattle yesterday at 184.50, up a buck 92. The December at 186.97, up 197. And the rest of the month's up a dollar 92 to a dollar 10. Our feeder cattle market was firmer as well. Up 222 on the October contract at 250.17. November up 165 at 252. And the rest of the month's up about a buck and a half or a little bit less. The Lane Hog market um, was a little bit lower on the close. December down a buck 45 at 69.97. Feb down 102 at 74.67. May down 75 at 86.12. I'd like to invite Brian Hoops back in. Brian is with Midwest Marketing. And was there anything that this grain production or washer report is going to have much of an impact to our cattle feeders and hog producers? Well, certainly, you know, what the corn market does today could have a big impact, especially on feeder cattle, uh, live cattle, and to a lesser extent, the hog market. Uh, you know, if we see a big move in the corn, there, there's no doubt it's going to be probably a, a opposite move in that feeder cattle market. Um, big move yesterday in, in both of those uh, live cattle and feeder cattle to the upside after some lower prices initially. So December charted an outside day higher, but, um, you know, the fundamentals really didn't back up this big rally. Rally. Cutout values continue to work lower. Packer margins still negative. It does look like so far this week, anyway, the slaughter pace has been pretty decent. A couple thousand head larger than uh, last week, so that's encouraging. The packers really sound like they're they're very short bought. Um, just the question is, how many cattle will they buy uh, if they have to chase the market? You know, a lot of it was steady to a dollar higher yesterday, so that was encouraging sign. As, a, as a, I think the market was really looking for, the trade was looking for steady to possibly lower trade this week. So. It really caught a lot of people off guard. Absolutely. And I know the volatility has been immense to begin with, and especially in the size price ranges that we've been trading at. Brian, I certainly do appreciate you taking the time to be with us here this morning. That's Brian Hoops. He's with Midwest Marketing, and I'm anxious to see the opening bell start this morning and see how we uh, see how we take off. So Yeah, you know, a lot happening. National Farmer Day. We also have the WASD report yes. coming out. It had to be hard for Marlin to take off knowing <laughs> that these two events would coincide. Well, and that, that is true because they're great days. Both of them. Yeah. So, you know, we, we're glad to be celebrating them with you. I appreciate that. Thank you, Chris.